Joining us now to talk about this a bit more in depth is Sean Kaufman. He's an infectious disease expert with extensive experience dealing with disease control. In fact, he has worked with the CDC and the World Health Organization. Thanks so much for being with us. Now, of course, we've learned that the WHO has said this is going to grow. We want to start with the MERS uh, outbreak there in South Korea. At this point, give us an idea on the best way they can try to contain this, but also how well equipped is South Korea to do that? Well, that's a great question. I think South Korea is really, in essence, one of the best healthcare systems that we do have out there. So I think that they are doing what they can right now to implement and kind of put in place social distancing practices that are going to slow this outbreak. I do expect that we'll see a lot more cases, uh, but I do think that what's being done right now is, is, is the best course of action to kind of slow the overall outbreak and get a census of really what's going on. And in many ways, this is a new frontier. I guess one person confirmed to have MERS in South Korea on May 20th had recently traveled to uh, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Qatar, and Bahrain. Of course, this originating, this virus, this uh, disease in the Middle East. Uh, why has it taken so long for an outbreak to occur? Did Saudi Arabia, where it originated, do something right in containing it, or is it just that new? No, I think that, you know, we don't know kind of where it came from at, at this moment in time, but what we do know is that uh, this individual did come over, has been extremely sick, which means they typically are shedding a lot of the virus when they are. We know that family members tend to take a lot of the nursing responsibilities over, and when family members who are very inexperienced with infection control practices start treating someone who's very sick, mm. uh, it could really lead to things that cause catastrophic outcomes like an outbreak of a very dangerous disease. Now, another issue we want to talk about, because we know you've had a lot of experience with this, is anthrax. And this, this case of shipping live anthrax, not only to a number of states within the, the USA, but also to other countries. Talk to us about how that can happen and how they can stop it from happening oh, What a again. blunder. Yeah. It, it, I, and I have to admit, it, it is a huge blunder, because it's not exactly what is supposed to be happening. What's, what's supposed to be happening, and it's for good reason, is that around the world we have detection systems to try and determine when a biological attack occurs. That's, that's kind of a very scary event, a terrorist attack that uses an agent like anthrax. How can we determine whether that threat is real and whether it is a true bioterrorist attack? So typically what the procedure is is to inactivate anthrax to really kill it, send it out to these labs and make sure that their detection systems are in place. Well, what has happened is the policy that was used to ensure an activation occurred did not work. So even if the workforce followed the policy, the reality was it wasn't enough to inactivate anthrax. And I suspect we're going to see many more labs report that they received live anthrax. And to know this has happened um, at the military level, I think, is what has stunned so many uh, people. I guess it also proves that there is human error that we have to take into account. And in both of these issues, I know that protecting healthcare workers is something you're passionate about. We should let our viewers know for transparency purposes, you're working with Nina Pham in Texas, correct, who was a healthcare worker um, infected with Ebola or was very upset because of how mistreated she felt she was? Well, I mean, how do we protect healthcare workers? Really? It, you know, it really, it really does come down to leadership here. I mean, so often we want to blame the nurse or we want to blame the doctor, but the reality of the situation is leaders have the right to expect the workforce to behave in a certain way when they show up to work. But the workforce has the right to expect leadership to protect and prepare them you know, as best as they can. And when you see nurses face emerging infectious diseases and they don't have the information they need to protect themselves, and you see folks that are doing things that they're not prepared for, like, for example, following a, following a policy that probably should have never been implemented in the first place, that doesn't call the workforce into error. It really calls it's a lack of leadership. And we see that in life sciences and we see it in the healthcare industry as well. Sean Kaufman, thank you so much for talking with us. We do appreciate it. Thank you. It's been Thanks. a pleasure. Thanks.